Meeting call to order. This is the council meeting held February 27th, 2024. Would the clerk please read the statement of compliance? This meeting is being held in accordance with the open public meetings law, duly announced, advertised, and posted in the municipal building. The meeting will adjourn no later than 10 p.m. unless a majority of the council members that are present vote to extend time. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we have a veteran present. Mike, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Would the clerk please read the roll call? Councilwoman Gofredo? Here. Councilman McCann? Here. Councilman Pignatelli? Here. Council President Saliani? Here. Councilman Slasinski? Here. Councilman Talamini? Here. And I'm here. Oh. <laughs> you know, Mayor Kamala. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, for the mayor's report, a uh, couple of really important right. items. Number one, water treatment. I'm happy to announce that Well 10 came online last Tuesday, okay? And the water testing currently is showing that there is a level of no detect for PFAS, okay? Okay. Now, the second well, Well 5, will be coming online this Thursday. If tests come clean, this will also be online by Thursday or Friday. Uh, once this is done, we will be sending out an announcement to all the residents, which means that now we have dealt with the PFAS issue in this town. Uh, Lakeside Boulevard, for the people who live by Lakeside Boulevard, all the water main work has been completed in that area, okay? And the sewer main work has also been completed. So you will not see any more road openings on Lakeside Boulevard and that side of, by Lakeside Boulevard. Also, I know it's, you know, it's a little bit of a, it's a rough road, but I'm happy to announce that the paving will be done in the spring and we're shooting for May. So that whole stretch of road should be repaved up on the Lakeside Boulevard area. I also want to thank all the residents that donated blood for the mayor's uh, blood drive uh, last week. I want to thank all, for all that donated. Also the band shell. The band shell, uh, we just are finishing up the electric in the band shell. We are going to be ready for June for the grand opening. So I want to thank all the professionals and contractors are working on that. Uh, the Van Allen House, uh, we, I've, uh, Ed Clark, who is currently the landscape architect, is he's also a volunteer in town. He's started to work on some ideas for the Van Allen House landscaping, so we can really figure out how to work away with that, you know, the, the crazy fencing and see if we can really make that a beautiful, how should we say, you know, important part of town going forward. Also, for the Lennard development, uh, as you know, there was a lot of testimony last week with Lennar for the property behind Indian Hills. Uh, I just want to let everybody know that the developer's agreement has not been signed yet. We are still waiting for some final details to be resolved before that development agreement gets signed. Uh, more than likely, it will be signed by the end of the week, but still a couple outstanding issues and a review. And the way the process works is when the developer's agreement comes in front of me, I send it out to the borough attorney. I send it out to the planning board attorney, chairman of the planning board. It goes to our borough engineer and it goes to our borough administrator for review until they sign off and everything is complete. I will not sign that document until it is complete. Um, and that's all I have. We are open to public. Do you have motion. a motion? Motion. Second. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good evening, Mayor. Uh, Michael Pritchard. I would like to... Can I have your address, sir? Oh, tw oh excuse me. 23 Calumet. Uh, what it has to deal with RML and Mira Lake. Now, what I have done, and I've looked at that, first of all, you should understand that the Ramapola River comes under the Federal Clean Water Appropriate Clean Water Act. That it does. It's also waters of the United States. It's also a purveyor of clean water to the North Jersey Water Supply District, in addition to tr tr trout, trout in that river. Now, what I did do was I looked at and I went right to the Supreme Court of the United States, and the case is called Rapano versus the U.S. And the Supreme Court of the United States extended 
the Clean Water Act to rivers, oceans, lakes, and streams, which now involves Mira Lake, because it flows into the Ramapo River. So now, what I then looked, went and looked at, said, well, what does the, uh, the federal statute said, which is 33 U.S. Code 1251 at second. It's 137 pages long. I looked at the 137 pages. And I say with, with the Supreme Court case, which is 97 pages. I looked at that too. But in the middle of that, two states popped out, Michigan and New Jersey. Why New Jersey? Well, New Jersey took over the administration of the Clean Water Act in this state. And they charged the DEP to promulgate and, and, and enforce regulations. And one of the regulations that they said to enforce, which RML is trying to sell the lake, they're going to have a problem with this, the New Jersey Administrative Code. And this is it's 7 colon 12 dash 11, and it's titled <coughs> Filling. And part A tells the disposition of the materials that filled in. And at the bottom it is, you can't fill in to raise the, lake, the, the level of a lake to build houses on. And then part B says filling is prohibited, period. So this has to go to the planning board because if RML wants to sell it and they want to build on it, they're pre prevented by the state of New Jersey, period. Case closed. They're also prevented by the U.S. government. But I also found out this. RML would sit there and say, we're going to charge you for insurance on the lake. About three, four, five hundred dollars, what it may be. Hold on, boys and girls, because in that Real Estate Development Act, what you guys are dealing with the other side of town, it says certain assessments prohibited. And let me read this. Let me get my glasses on. You know, I'm trying to catch my breath here, so bear with me. But it says here, an association and a community established prior to the effective date of November 22, 1978, of Planned Real Estate Development Full Disclosure Act, ETSEC, shall not be permitted to require property owners to pay assessments or other charges where the property owner's title does not impose such an obligation. Mine doesn't. I've got a copy over here. And then it goes on and sits there and says, if, after July 13, 2017, the, the association recorded a lien against the property owners for non-payment that is based solely on a misinterpretation of the news responsibilities. The owners pay the association of other charges. The lien shall be null and void. So there's a second thing in there. And then the third one sits there and it says, if RML doesn't remove those liens, then the lien holder can take RML to court. And then guess what? It says around right here, the petition the court to award counsel fees. So in other words, they would be playing for the plaintiff's attorney. That's three things right here. And this was effective my birthday, July 30th, 2020. So they got it right there. And just for ha -ha's, I brought in a, a copy of my title. Although it says deed, the state of New Jersey now calls it title. Well, it's six of one half a dozen of the other folks. But that's what it is. And I have it right here for you. Mr. Pritchard, you also mentioned something about veterans. If they're a veteran, they can't have an attachment on their... Yeah, that's something else. That's why the VA would never have given me this if there was an attachment onto it. That never would have happened. They would have bounced it right away. And I've been in, with, in touch with the VA because I get 100% disability from them now. But that, there's also something else that you should be aware of. If somebody goes into there and tries to fill in that lake, don't do it. The fines go like this, anywhere from $250, you know, 20, excuse me, $2,500 a day, up to $25,000 per day. And 30 days, that's three quarters of a million dollars. You don't want to fool around because you're dealing with the state and the federal government on this. So that's what you're dealing with, and you've got to know what you're dealing with because the U.S. government's turned out to be a very powerful neighbor in this town, either through the highway, the river, he says, and the railroad, and so forth like that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pritchard. Could you give that to the clerk? We'll pass it on to our phone. Right. I made a copy of this. You know, it's two pages, and it goes down into detail. There's something else I'd like to ask about. That deal down there on West Oakland Avenue with that... that uh, recycling. The recycling thing. That guy there, if he allowed that stuff to go off his property into the Ramapo River, 
he's looking at $25,000 a day in fine because that comes under the, fresh, the Clean Water Act. So he's in a lot of trouble. He doesn't know about it. And does the county know about that too? Yes. Okay. We've got, I, I've got to freeholder me. Yes, they're acutely aware. <coughs> okay, so what I got here is three things. A two-page white paper, a new statute, a copy of my thing, and the administration code. Permission to approach? Thank you, sir. You can give it to the clerk. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pritchard. Let me put it all together. But I hope it makes it clear that they can't do what they want to do. And again, for my neighbors, I, I get it. Thank you very much. For my neighbors on Mira Lake, I looked at my deed, that's what it says. It might be just for ha ha's, rinse giggles, and ha ha's. It gives, it's an old one, but it gives the lots 31A and 31B in block uh, 3426 of the map, and it's right here. They're all going to say the same thing. And I went and I checked the previous owner of our house. Her deed says the same thing, and the original owner of the house says the same thing. And I got hard copies of that. So, here. Did I do it right? Yes, you did. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank Pritchard. you, Mr. Pritchard. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'll scan it and send it out to the mayor and council. And also okay. the planner. Okay. Yeah. Well, again, you. you know, you got to keep the planning board in board with this, you know, because they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pritchard. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody uh, else? Yeah. Hello, I'm Gina McDonald from 56 Lakeview Terrace. Good evening, and congratulations on this year. Uh, my husband is here with me and our neighbor Gail is here and we would like to know more details as to what the situation is going forward on the work that's being done with the water main drain on Birch Avenue. As of right now a small section was almost completed now. They have to finish and then pave the section that they replaced the drains and the uh, water. Uh, water main? Water main? No. Storm, storm, storm sewer? The drain, the storm drain. The storm drains that were replaced and then the drains under the ground. So there is an area going all the way from Lakeview up to West Oakland Avenue that hasn't been addressed. And going forward, are you planning on doing that section, I hope, and when? Because we flooded pretty badly, not because of the river, but because of the damage and the age of the storm drains that are on that road. And four cars got pretty messed up. Um, it came like a thief in the night. My husband and I were not home. We were down at my brother's. It was in December visiting. And I got a phone call from Gail at 7 o'clock in the morning. Hey, uh, I don't think you guys are home, but the street is flooding really bad. And she had no idea why. Because Lakeview Terrace isn't flooding, just birch. And this never happened before. And I think just it's the right time now. The storm drain and the, the drains underneath the ground there were so badly damaged that it looked like it wasn't like at all put together anymore. They, it was like corrugated cardboard falling apart, and although it was steel at one time, but it, it literally looked like cardboard coming out as they're replacing these drains. It's, they're falling apart. They're like disintegrated. So I know <laughs> from the point where they did not do all the way up to West Oakland Avenue is really bad, especially up to the section up to Grandview. Uh, <clears throat> they did a patchwork on um, like a Band-Aid on one of the storm drains on Grandview coming down Birch and it's not doing the job of what really happened. That was just a situation because there was like a sinkhole there where somebody's gonna fall and really get hurt. It was bad, it was like three, four feet deep. And there's another area like that on um, public property, town property, that's, we call it the mud hole. It's just a section of land between the two houses on Birch Avenue where it crosses Lakeview, there's a five by five 
hole in the ground three to four feet deep. And if there's anybody walking there and it's snow on the ground, they won't even see it, fall it right into the river. So what we'll do is uh, our borough engineer is here, our borough administrator is here. Uh, we'll discuss this, and you said you're, we can reach you at 35 Lake Street. Okay, well, what we'd like to know is what's the plan from Gale Storm Drain um, all the way up to at least Grandview, and I have photos of how the water flooded on that street. I have them on my phone. I'll be glad to email it somewhere. But we want to know the timeline and and is it on the plan to do that section because I know there's money allotted and you had to use a certain amount by a certain time, but what is happening around town? Is that money allotted for those areas too? And are they flooding? Is there a situation? Because there's a claim for four vehicles. Um, right now that is probably should get addressed because of the severity that happens because of the storm drains and not the storms the drains that caused the flooding all of a sudden this happened it never happened before in December though it happens and we had heavy rain so now with heavy rains coming again it's gonna flood again possibly so that's why I want to know when is that is it in the plan and when Okay. the rest of Birch because I know that the roads are going to get paved but it can't get paved unless that's replaced because it really needs to be done I know it's going to flood again okay like so, the same so, way. so what I'm going to do is we're going to talk to our borough uh, engineer uh -huh. and, and, the, and our borough administrator and we'll get you back to you with those answers and I'm acutely aware of the flooding down there being on the fire department I, I know firsthand what what it looks like down there if no but it's not because of the river the river's great yeah. Okay. This is because of the drain, okay. and I, you could see it in black and white. Well, I have a color photo, but it, you can see it. It's easier, like a picture's worth a thousand words. Here's my card. Yep. You can send me the photos Absolutely. in an email. And what yeah. was your address again? Oh, I'm 56 sorry. 56 Lake Do yeah. yeah. you, you have to add anything to that? Did I, did I finish? Could you also put your phone number back in that and give this to the clerk, please? There you go. Can I borrow? Yep. Yeah. Mr. McDonald? Yeah, Dan McDonald, 56 Lake Street Terrace, also. between his husband, obviously. I uh, worked for PSANG for 44 years. I uh, watched the contractor for seven years. Thank you. Up in Anglewood, Anglewood, Clear, Ford Lee, Paran Resort. I've been an inspector on the job, okay? So I'm the guy that's watching the work get done. Obviously, we don't have inspectors down here doing, when they did the water main on Lake Street Terrace, there was no inspector. So the contractor, and do what he wants. Sloppy back build, they're not tamping the holes correctly. I walked out a couple of times and mentioned it. You, got, you guys got to fill it up at least halfway and hit it. They're filling it to the top and they're hitting it once. That was the water man. You gotta, that's why, without an inspector out there watching out, contractors do what they want and they're very sloppy. All of them, they all do. I'm working with Fletcher Crane, but they're doing a good job, but I got, I got to keep on, I got to stay on them. It's real simple, you get the job done right cleaned up, take care of the people's property. When these guys came in and did these drains, they're very sloppy. They, they're using a soft broom to sweep the ground, like the one you use in your garage. A uh, half inch of mud, I mean, it's not gonna help. They really need to get a sweeper down there and clean that up. Coming down from uh, West Oakland Avenue, the drain, I believe, is 18 inches coming down. And by Grandview, where it had the big sinkhole in a woman's yard in the corner, it's 12 inches. So when that, 18 inch hit to 12 inch, and half of the 12 inch is full of mud. <coughs> when they did that repair, I walked out there and I looked inside the drain. It was collapsed halfway and, and full of half, mud the other half. There's nowhere for the water to go. It's gonna come up out of the catch basins. So that's what happened in December. It came up and it flooded the streets. Pretty bad, I've never seen that happen in 34 years of living there. I've seen it come from the river, but never come down from West Oakland Avenue. So through the years, the drains have gotten worse and worse, and now they're, they're done. Yeah. They're done. When they pulled them out of the ground, they said they were disintegrated. The steel was so rotted out. Yeah, I saw the pile. So it's just a disaster. So I spoke to the engineer on the job. His name was John. I'm, I forgot his last name. You can. But uh, he had mentioned to me, you know, yeah, you got to spend the money a certain amount of time. You lose, just like PSEG. We do a job, a certain allotment of money is used, and you have to use it. By a certain date, or you lose it. It's the same deal, you know. So we do. I understand the theory. 
But uh, if you're doing drains where it's not needed and they're not flooding and you're not finishing that little piece of uh, birch going up to West Oakland Avenue, it's, it's going to cause a big problem. It's going to cause a big problem. I don't see it. All right, now you got to deal with the environmental, with the, with the river. That takes forever to get the permits and all that stuff. But like Gina said about that five by five foot hole on this side of the wall, that's been there for over two years. We've had some barrels put there, cones, tape, blah, 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 but it was really never addressed. You know, it's just, you're gonna cover it up. Somebody walked in there, like Gina said, in the winter, you don't see it, you step in the holes. The pipe is not even there. It's disintegrated, it's a hole. You look down there, you, you can see the hole where the drain used to be. So the water's not even making it to it, really. So uh, I don't know what, uh, so John did say that he'd like to get pipe from the wall inside so you don't have to ad address the, the water itself. Because when you gotta get in there and do the wall, and redo the wall, that's gonna take permits and a lot of time. But for right now, to make this safe, we can get a piece of pipe in the mud hole in that grassy area. It's a uh, private right away. Let's get it right, private right away. They can get a piece of pipe from the water to the street where they installed the manhole, and that's where they stopped. That would alleviate a lot of problems. Well, like I said, our borough engineer is sitting at the, the end of the table here, so we will... Just so you have a good understanding yeah. of what we're dealing with exactly. That, that's what's underground over there. Okay. You know, and today, a woman came up to me across the street, and she said, oh, I got problems with my water. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, well, it was dirty, and it was the pressure wasn't right. I said, well, maybe they hit your water service or something over there. So I, didn't, I, I think the town should be aware of that. If that guy breaks a water service, he should let the town know and let the people know there was nobody home. They didn't leave a note, but you know, then the then, then next door neighbor had some mud in his water. <laughs> so they obviously broke something, you know? I think the town should be aware of that also. Okay. So when this contract is doing things, you know, there's nobody out there watching. So he just does what he wants. Okay. And I appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Frank Rotaco, 51 Lakeshore Drive. Um, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, so I'm here uh, as part of a group of lakefront homeowners living uh, on Crystal Lake and a few on Mirror Lake as well, um, who are trying to work together um, with, uh, with RML and with the Crystal Lake Community Beach Club, as well as uh, the, the Borough Mayor and Council, uh, to, try to try to find a solution um, to the challenges we're facing that that hopefully uh, meets meets everybody's needs. We have uh, you know a large number of uh, residents in Oakland who are part of RML who want to be uh, released from RML and and not be part of that association anymore. Uh, but we also have two beautiful lakes and a lot of people that want to see those lakes protected and preserved. Uh, those of us that live on it, those of us that don't, um, you know, it, it, the lakes are a real asset to the town. And, um, you know, I've, I've spoken here at, at a few meetings uh, over the past few months about, um, you know, how important those lakes are uh, to me, my family, to all the people I know in, in this community. Um, so, uh, first of all, I want to extend, you know, my thanks to, to the mayor and uh, several members of the council for meeting with us um, early in the year uh, to kick off those discussions. We, you know, we talked a lot about some of the potential solutions that we're trying to reach. Um, you know, uh, those of us that are part of this uh, Lakefront Homeowner Group, we have been in discussions with RML um, and we've come up with a few different avenues uh, to, to approach um, coming up with a solution. Uh, a few of the lakefront homeowners, uh, in including myself, are drafting a letter of intent to form a nonprofit organization that could potentially help uh, reach a solution by, by maybe taking over control of, of the lakes and making uh, the, the situation for RML a little easier if they are able to downsize their numbers. Um, but what I wanted to come here to stress and, and reiterate, I, I spoke a lot about it at the meeting with, with, with the mayor um, and also at previous council meetings. Um, is just how important it is that we have the borough's help um, in moving forward here. The biggest impediment to, to really any solution that we're trying to reach, whether it's something we've come up with or RML's come up with or anybody's come up with, is the cost of repairing the Crystal Lake Dam. Um, this is going to be a rather expensive cost. Um, it's going to be hard for RML or the Lakefront home, 
sorry, Lakefront homeowners to bear um, in the in the current situation. Um, and you know, once again, the reason for all the damage to the Crystal Lake Dam is that Crystal Lake does receive a large percentage of the stormwater from across the borough of Oakland. Um, every time it floods, um, the lake is just battered with stormwater and that dam as a result is battered with stormwater. It is battered with debris that does not come from the lake. It comes from other, other parts of town. Uh, a lot of debris comes down Allerman Brook. We have massive tree trunks slamming into um, our two outlet pipes over and over again for years and years. Um, and as a result, we're left uh, with a pretty big bill uh, that we're, we're really not able to, to fund at the moment on our own. Um, so, you know, the ask from us, uh, really, what, what, I'm, what I'm here to reiterate and ask the mayor and council again is to please, you know, consider uh, helping out with the repair of, of the Crystal Lake Dam. Um, you know, we, there's a lot of different ways that we're considering trying to fund this repair. Um, as uh, our previous speaker mentioned, one of them is, you know, RML is proposing selling uh, Mirror Lake and the adjacent property. Um, this is something that a lot of us don't think would be desirable for uh, the community um, really, really at all and may not, may not end up being possible. Um, so any way that the borough can help us um, uh, fund the repair of the Crystal Lake Dam uh, would be a massive step forward, probably the most important step forward towards finally, you know, putting an end to uh, this problem that has been <laughs> plaguing a huge amount of the Oakland community for pretty much uh, as long as I have been uh, living on Crystal Lake longer, actually. Um, that's really all I came to say, but I did want to thank uh, Mayor Kamala again for, for uh, you know, meeting with us and, and working with us. And, um, and I want to thank uh, the, the entire council tonight for listening. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> I just want to clarify that. something that could help this gentleman. He doesn't understand that uh, Alman Brook actually goes into Franklin Lakes in a long high mountain drive, almost to the uh, you know the church over there, and also picks up a lake on the other side of town of Franklin Lakes, which goes down behind you know the, that shopping center mm -hmm. on on on. on, 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 on on that road down there. But that's where it picks it up. It goes all the way to Camp Law and all the way oh, to High Mountain. Yeah, that's right. I already have the, map. I have the maps from the U.S. government on They're it. They're massive. You know, it's massive. So that's what you're dealing with. It's just not the town of Oakland. And it's just the same as when they talk about Mira Lake. There's two streams going into that lake. Right now as we speak, there's two streams going into it. And it flows into, you know, Alleman Brook. But that's the, what you're dealing with in it. It's a large volume of water. Now the other thing about it is, is the state of New Jersey, the, D, the, the DP, not the DEP, the Highway Department, screwed up some stuff on Alleman Brook, which also increases the flow of water, the velocity of it, mm -hmm. you know, and it ruins a lot of your gabions and everything else. I'm on the flood commission. That's how I know that stuff. But that's what it's, you're dealing with. So you know, talking about that, and then again, what I brought up about that change in the, in the real estate law, you know, that can affect you really bad. Big time, you know, which is that uh, you have it right there. But, you know, the people could just sit there and say, like me, I can sit there and say, you can assess me for all you want, but the state of New Jersey says no. So that's what you're dealing with. So they have, you know, you're looking at these folks, you're looking at a big financial and problem here for the town. Because what happens if they go belly up? Then what is Borough going, going to do? Think about that. Just think about that. But again, you're dealing with Mother Nature. And if you try to fight Mother Nature, you're going to lose big time. So thank you for Thank you, Mr. Pritchard. Hi. Uh, Adam Elkin, 147 Lakeshore Drive. Uh, really just here to reinforce and reiterate the messages you've heard tonight about the storm water and the effects specifically on the population of RML, Mirror Lake, Crystal Lake, and um, they're supporting dams. These are gems for this town. They're treasures. They act as an extension of our already best-in-class sports and recreation programs. There's so many ways we can make use of, of these assets as a town that, that we're letting slide to the wayside right now as, as we work through these arguments and, and these legal concerns. 
and really we all just want to work together to make this the best it can be for Oakland. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council, for listening to the concerns and hopefully offering to, to help us find a, a solution that work can help all in, in the community. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. You got to work together. Absolutely. Sheila Boylan, 16 Walnut Street, Oakland. Uh, I've been in town for, I don't know, 47, 48 years. I lived at the top of uh, Long Hill Road. If you put a stick in the ground, you got water. We had a French drain. I mean, anybody here who thinks there's no water in Oakland mm -hmm. is, it's, it's an aquifer. And we need to support that. And all of these people down, uh, uh, and I, my son grew up at Crystal Lake. It was the best thing that ever happened in the town, and I would love to see it be, be preserved and taken care of. Um, I'm in a house that's at least 160 plus years old on Walnut Street, where when I moved in, I had no water, I had no problems, I had a little brook running through the corner of my yard. Now it's a raging river. All the water, uh, storm drains from uh, Demarest come down. I now I have a neighbor who uh, elevated his yard, and now the whole back of my yard is flooded. Uh, it, uh, water is an issue in Oakland, and we all need to pay attention to it. It's not going away. <laughs> we are an aquifer. We have to understand that. And when this new development comes in, God bless you people mm -hmm. down on the river. I, I, or on the lake. There was a house I looked at, I was ready to buy it, and I thought, oh no, I'm not getting involved in that. Because it's a mess. It's a hole. Nobody is paying attention. Uh, the brook behind my property is called Winter Brook. It was moved by the former owners that came down with backhoes at 6 o'clock in the morning and re-dug it and 30 years I fought that with the DEP, Betsy Stagg, for anybody who's been around long enough to who Betsy Stagg was. Oh, I'm going to take care, uh, Pete, Pete Kendall was going to, well, we're going to make sure that's all taken care of. It has never been changed. Uh, when the town finally bought that property, thank you, I appreciate that, I love looking at my trees. Um, Betsy Stagg said to me, oh, we can't move that. What do you mean move it? They redirected it. I want to go back where it used to be. No, nobody, it's, it's <laughs> become very frustrating. I now have a swamp in my backyard because of my neighbors. They did it all without licensing permits anything i go to the what the maintenance they say oh you got to see mr ukemic mr ukemic says oh you got to see the administrator the administrator sends me back to the maintenance people so far i still have a swamp in my backyard i didn't have a swamp i'm there 43 years I never have water. I, I'm be, between how they diverted the brook that for 33 years nobody did anything about. The EPA came in and said, oh yeah, no, they can't do that. We're fining them $2,000 a day. Nobody paid a nickel. Nothing got done. I, I'm, I'm I'm ready to stand here and say to anybody in Oakland, you, whatever you want to do, do it. Because the town will never back you up. They'll let it go. I've been told they're not going to do anything. 
for me. Period. That's uh, that. I mean, they never did anything to redirect uh, to uh, redirect the book, Brook Winterbrook, where it always was. And I'm just getting very, very uh, frustrated. And I was recently told, uh, well, you know, it's already done. We're not going to do anything. You're going to have to have a little, uh, civil suit, which means I'd have to hire a lawyer and have somebody come in. What? That's crazy. And I'm, I mean, I'm not, I literally wanted to buy one of the houses down there. I've always wanted to be down there. And I said, I'm not going to involved in that mess. And uh, whoever bought it didn't know what was going on. We're, oh, I don't know what else to say other than, you know, there's water <coughs> involved in Oakland, and nobody seems to pay attention <coughs> to it. Sorry, I'm ranting. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? I say anybody motion to close? Motion to close. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, we have the approval of minutes, February 13th, 2024. Have a motion to approve? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion to approve minutes of the executive session of February 13th, 2024. Motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, special announcements, appointments and raffles. We have authorized raffle license RL1490 for the Rebuilding Together of New Jersey 5050 on July 6, 2024 upon Reform Church. Motion to motion to approve. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, moving on to committee appointees. So I have uh, for a mayor's appointment for the green team, I got Canu, Canu Dua for a one-year term, expires 12-31-24. And the following are going to be mayoral appointment with council consent. For the arts committee, I have a Kevin Badger, Angela D'Alessandro, De and Phyllis Roman for a one-year term for the arts committee. For the public events, I got a Christina Newell for a three-year term. And for the zoning board, well, I'm going to move Diane Lilienthal up from... Uh, alternate to full member, which will expire on 12 31 24. And I'm going to ask to appoint Lee Dodd for alternate one, which expires 12 31 27. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. No roll call. A roll call. Aye, roll call. Clerk? Councilwoman Gofredo? Yes. Councilman McCann? Yes. Councilman Pignatelli? <coughs> yes. Council President Saliani? Yes. Councilman Slosinski? Yes. Councilman Tallarini? Yes. All right, we have the following resolution, consent agenda 2494 through 24100. And we're going to be pulling out 2497 because uh, Councilman Pignatelli has a conflict. And we're removing 2498 uh, for uh, refund of taxes until next meeting. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Gofredo? Yes. Councilman McCann? Yes. Councilman Pignatelli? Yes. Council President Saliani? Yes. Councilman Slosinski? Yes. Councilman Talamini? Yes. Okay, now we're going to move uh, 2497 resolution authorizing approval of 2023 LOSAP list. So have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Roll call. Who did the motion? I'm sorry. You? John seconded. I'm sorry. Uh, Councilwoman Gofredo? Yes. Councilman McCann? Yes. Councilman Pignatelli? Abstain. Councilman, Council President Saliani? Yes. Councilman Slasinski? Yes. Councilman Talamini? Yes. Okay, moving on to ordinance. We have the introduction of ordinance 24 code 943. Mr. Gilson, would you like to explain that? Yes, yeah, so this is similar to the um, was it rattlesnake ordinance, the snake ordinance we had, where the state called into question the legality of our ordinance. 
So we're updating certain language in the code to conform with state statutes. Thank you, sir. Do I have a motion to introduce? So moved. Second. Second, Mr. McCann. Uh, roll call, please. Um, Councilwoman Gofredo? Yes. Councilman McCann? Yes. Councilman Pignatelli? Yes. Council President Saliani? Yes. Councilman Slosinski? Yes. Councilman Talamini? Yes. And the public hearing and adoption will be scheduled for the council meeting on March 12th. All right, we have the final adoption. We have, uh, we talked about these last week, uh, 24 490 ordinance capital fund IT infrastructure. We had a discussion on that last week. Do we have a motion open to public? So moved. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Gofredo? Yes. Councilman McCann? Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Pignatelli? Yes. Council President Saliani? Yes. Councilman Slesinski? Yes. Councilman Talamini? Yes. Motion open to public? That was a motion. Oh, sorry. Anybody wish to speak on this ordinance? Not seeing any. Motion to close. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, motion to adopt. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Gofredo? Yes. Councilman McCann? Yes. Councilman Pignatelli? Yes. Council President Saliani? Yes. Councilman Slosinski? Yes. Councilman Talamini? Yes. Okay, next order next ordinance is twenty four capital four nine forty one or capital ordinance to amend ordinance hashtag twenty two dash eight eight five. We had discussion on this last week. Do we have the motion open to public? So moved. Do have a second? Second. Roll call. Do we need a roll call or is this uh, all in favor of that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody wish to speak on ordinance, capital ordinance 24 941? Not seeing any. Motion, motion to close. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we have a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Gofredo? Yes. Councilman McCann? Yes. Councilman Pignatelli? Yes. Council President Saliani? Yes. Councilman Slosinski? Yes. Councilman Talamini? Yes. All right, well, the next one we have is Ordinance 24, Code 942. This is to amend the Recreation Commission to a committee and establish a trust fund. I know we had a lengthy discussion on this last week. Do I have a motion open to public? So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Anybody from the public wish to speak to 24 Code 942, creating a rent committee and trust fund? Not seeing anybody. Motion to close. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So I have a motion to adopt Ordinance 24 Code 942. So moved. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Gofredo? Yes. Councilman McCann? Yes. Councilman Pignatelli? Yes. Council President Saliani? Yes. Councilman Slosinski? Yes. Councilman Talamini? Yes. Okay, now, so we kind of did this out of order because we had to create the ordinance for the REC committee. Now we have two ordinances for the REC committee. First one is 2492 resolution request and permission of dedication by rider for a trust fund. And 2493 resolution to establish recreation committee bylaws. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Gofredo? Yes. Councilman McCann? Yes. Councilman Pignatelli? Yes. Council President Saliani? Yes. Councilman Slosinski? Yes. Councilman Talamini? Yes. Okay, now I'm going to make the appointments to the rec committee. All right, and what we've done is uh, we have just taken the existing commission appointments and we simply moved them over with the same terms that are currently in place. So I'll read them off by name and expiration of their term, okay? First person is Michael Guadino. His term expires 12-31-26. Second is Stephen Catalano. His, ex his term expires 12-31-27. We have Dan Legato, Commissioner, 12-31-2028. I've got Michael Ives, Commissioner, 12-31-24. I've got Michael Bleeker, Commissioner, 12-31-26 expiration. I've got Commissioner Constance Roy, expiration 12 31 25. 
I've got Robert Scalabrini, Commissioner, expires 12 31 26. I've got Megan Rotundo, Alternate 1, expiring 12 31 25. I've got Alternate 2, Justin Austin Wall, expiring 12 31 24. And we've got Ariel Percadillo <coughs> for Borough Secretary, to and we've got Russell Tallamy, who's a council based. Motion to approve all these commissioners. So moved. Second. Do we need a roll call or is this a consent? As the, if it was a rec committee, it would be your direct appointment, so I would say this would still be your direct appointment. With council consent? No, just direct appointment. A rec commission is a direct mayoral appointment, so I would say a rec committee would fall under the same. Okay. It's a direct mayor's appointment. All right, so all right we're done. We're good? We're good. Okay. <laughs> all right. That wasn't so bad. You got your trust, you got everything now. It was five minutes when we were appointed. <laughs> <laughs> we have continuity. Uh, we have nothing for work session. Does anybody have any new business for the common good? Not seeing any. Do we have any old business? Uh, I think I have some old business. Just, uh, so from from rec. Uh, so the so the the rec shed. The, we had a, a, a claim on it, and we just want to need a, to know the date of. Is there a date of completion? I don't have a date of completion right now. Uh, I know that the uh, contractor that's been hired is going through the submittal process uh, on the roof design for the permit. Uh, I'll follow up with uh, DPW tomorrow. And then they were asking about um, insurance claim for items that were damaged in the building. Right, I think I need some additional information on those items in order to send that over to uh, the insurer for processing. But Mike and I can talk about that after the meeting. Okay, and then um, I don't know if you see, do you want to uh, just clear up something with the tenants? Oh, yeah, already. Okay. Well, I cleared up. I spoke to the job. Okay, all right. Then, uh, that was the old business I had. Any about any old business? Can I just get an update from uh, our legal counsel about what's going on with the, the dump on the other side of town, please? Yeah, so there's been no action. I reviewed the three older commissioners' agendas yesterday and reached out, and there has been no action to amend the waste management plan at this time. Thank you. Anybody else have any old business? Not seeing any. Uh, Borough Council uh, liaison reports. We'll start at the end, Ms. Corfredo. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I, I would just like to report, um, I have... I did all my reports last uh, meeting. Um, there have been no meetings since. Um, I did speak, I did receive a phone call in concern about the uh, construction up at the high school for the new development. Um, and, I, and I had met with Shade Tree and I did give them a call again um, just to reiterate their stance. They are sad, more satisfied with the trees that are going to be planted. Um, there, there's going to be trees removed, obviously. That's a big concern and everybody's concerned. But there's no stopping it. And um, But there will be trees planted upwards. To, over a 1,000 trees will be planted. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, in addition, just to my committee report, I want to just um, take time to recognize a um, a citizen that passed away, Bill Pizzuti, died last week. Um, he was a great Oakland resident, um, a veteran, a U.S. Army veteran, and I will always remember him. Um, I did attend his celebration for life today, and it was quite beautiful. Uh, so I would just like to take that moment just to remember him. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Councilor? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, from the Green Team, uh, the Green Team met last night and uh, wanted me to let everyone know about the upcoming events. Um, on March 1st, uh, sign up start for the Community Garden. Um, and on Sunday, March 3rd at 11 a.m., first Sunday hikes continue. Participants meet at the lower level parking lot of Skyline Drive. Uh, registration is required and can be found on the Green Team section of the borough's website. On Saturday, April 6th, uh, at 8.30 a.m., they will have a styrofoam collection drive at one municipal plaza. And on May 4th, uh, with a rain date of May 5th, uh, they will have bird watching with uh, Rick Weeman. 
Uh, for more details on this and other uh, upcoming events, visit the website. Uh, the, the, team, um, uh, the team is also seeking volunteers to join, so if you're interested, please contact Chairwoman Allison Fleason at greenteam um, at oakland-nj.org. A uh, quick uh, note from uh, Public Safety, uh, from the Police Department, for the month of January, officers conducted 378 motor vehicle stops and issued 371 motor vehicle summonses. Uh, from the library, uh, the regular children's programs continue, and on Monday, March 4th at 10 a.m., they will host favorite foreign films, and on Monday, uh, March 11th at 6 p.m., the Cookbook Club is meeting. Uh, call the library for more information if interested. Uh, they're also uh, going to have spring concert series with information coming soon. Uh, again, if you're interested in these events or other events, you could sign up and be added to the mailing list and have the monthly newsletter emailed directly to you. That's all I have for tonight. I, I just want to just put a point on that. Anybody that's, Rick Weinman, when he does the bird watching, he's world renowned. He travels around the world doing tours. Um, and I had an opportunity, being part of the green team, to do it last year. I recommend everybody just sign up. It's free. And it's, it's, you go down to Great Oak Park, and he points out all the birds. And it really is a good hour or two just hiking around and really going through with a professional guide. So thank you, Councilman. Councilman McKen? No reports. Councilman Salyan? Um, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> For uh, Bush Plaza, uh, there is a pre-construction meeting scheduled for Thursday at 10 o'clock. So, um, Looking forward to, to having the construction start on that in the next couple of weeks. Anyone who would, we are taking donations for Bush Plaza. If anyone wants to donate, they, they can contact me at my borough email or the SAO, and we're taking donations um, for um, anything from benches to to clocks to uh, to any anything items in the park. So, uh, if anyone's interested, please reach out. For the for public events, um, the next public event that's coming will be March 23rd, the Easter egg hunt. And there are preparations for that. And I also would like to welcome Christine Nubel to the um, Public Events Committee. We'll see you at your first meeting, which will be March 11th. And um, also, they are looking for a few new members in the Public Events Committee. So please, if you're interested, reach out and fill out a citizen's leadership form. That's all I have. Councilor Pignatelli. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> the Environmental Commission uh, did not meet last month. We had, uh, our, our chairman was out of the country, and there was, uh, there was no, uh, there wasn't a quorum. Uh, the next Environmental Commission meeting is March the 5th. Uh, the last Board of Health meeting held on February 20th. I was unable to make um, the meeting. I was out on a call, on, on the first aid call. Uh, I didn't get back until uh, the meeting was probably over. But anyway, the next uh, Board of Health meeting is March the 19th. And that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councilor tell me. Uh, first, I just want to say thank you to Councilman Saliani for attending the, the rec meeting. I, I'm, I'm, my, I'm getting down to my last uh, coaching assignments for my, for my youngest son, and uh, so I'm not missing any of his games. <laughs> so uh, I'll be at the next meeting, though, unless, unless, uh, unless the playoffs go longer. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, but other than that, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you, everybody. Uh, bills, to be, bills to be paid. Councilman Grafredo. Uh, bills to be paid. $1,810,773.97. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Grafredo? Yes. Councilman McCann? Yes. Councilman Pignatelli? Yes. Council President Saliani? Yes. Councilman Flasinski? Yes. Councilman Talamini? Yes. Do I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Meeting adjourned. The next row council meeting will be held Tuesday, March 12, 2024, 20, 7 p.m. here at the council chambers. Thank you, everybody.